Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and uh, members of the media, welcome to this year's Intergeo press conference in Stuttgart. It is Wednesday, and uh, this media event traditionally marks half time of Intergeo, the leading international expo and conference for forward looking geospatial applications. My name is Christopher Wirtgen. I will do my best to make this event as informative and exciting as possible. Uh, the DVW, the German Association of Geodesy, Geoinformation and Land Management, has put up a headline for this year's media event, and this is Harnessing Geodata for Climate-Friendly Solutions to Societal Issues, Urban Digital Twins and AI-Driven innovations. Our world is at a critical juncture. We are currently experiencing a convergence of several crises correlating with, it, with each other uh, to a large extent. Just some examples. We are confronted with rising and escalating conflicts around the globe and we are in a period of impending economic recession and we witness heavy testings of democratic institutions by autocracy, populism, and widespread disinformation. And of course, we are witnessing the escalating impacts of climate change. Extreme weather events are increasing in frequency and intensity with severe impact on people directly affected on economies and on ecosystems. Urban centers, they stand at the forefront of this threat with more than half of the world population now living in cities and projections showing that this will increase to nearly 70% by 2050. It is obvious that the way we design and manage urban spaces will significantly impact our ability to combat climate change and its impact in the future. And one of the key tools, and this, this is why we are all here, is geodata. <coughs> the ability to capture, to analyze, and to apply geospatial information for decision making is a strategic necessity in today's world. CAD, GIS, BIM, and digital twins truly have the power to unlock the great potentials of geodata. By creating digital replicas of our cities, we can simulate, test, and anticipate various scenarios, optimize energy consumption, reduce emissions, rethink mobility, and enhance the resilience of our urban cities. Lots of data are needed for that. AI-driven analytics help us to process vast amounts of data in ever shorter time to identify patterns and trends that would otherwise go unnoticed. But how successful are we already where do we need to improve? What challenges do we face? And who probably stands on the brakes? Lots of questions, and I'm happy to have distinguished expertise here on the panel um, for reliable answers. And for media representatives, uh, we will, of course, provide enough time following this event for your questions. So let me introduce our guests. I welcome Professor Rudolf Steiger. He is president of the German Association of Geodesy, Geoinformation and Land Management, DVW, the Gesellschaft für Geodesy, Geoinformation und Landmanagement. So viel Zeit muss sein. The DVW is the host of Intergeo and organizer of the Intergeo conference. Rudolf Steiger held a professorship at Bochum University for geodesy until 2022. He is a known expert for international correlations in the field of surveying and led the FIG, the International Federation of Surveyors, as president until 2021. Welcome, Professor Steiger. Thank you. Thank you. I welcome... <laughs> Thank you. I welcome Ralf Mosler. I'm not keeping uh, the, uh, the, the right order, but um, Ralf Moser leads the BIM transformation at Autodesk. He is a building information modeling expert of the first hour with over 20 years of experience in leading international tech companies. 
Autodesk is a leading software company specializing in products for architecture, for engineering and entertainment, best known for its Auto CAD software as well as 3D modeling, simulation and effects tools used across various industries. Autodesk has just been named the official design and make platform of the LA 28 Olympics and Paralympic Games. Congratulations for that. And Autodesk is platinum sponsor of Intergeo. Ralf Mosler, happy to have you here. Thank you. Great to have you. I welcome Thomas Keifenbelt. Uh, since July, Thomas Keifenbelt is Chief Revenue Officer and part of the management team of Esri Germany. Before, he was responsible for the customer and partner business for more than five years as Director Sales. <laughs> Esri, which stands for Environmental System Research Institute, was founded in 1969 in California and specializes in geographic information systems, software, and location intelligence. Esri also is platinum sponsor of Intergeo, Thomas Keifenbelt, Welcome on stage. I welcome Boris Skopjak. Boris Skopjak is Vice President for the Geospatial Sector at Trimble. Trimble is a leading technology company that specializes in providing positioning, connectivity, and data analytics solutions. Boris Skopjak looks back on more than two decades of industry experience in Europe and the United States. The solutions of Trimble's survey and mapping division enable high-quality productive workflows and information exchange for surveyors, engineering, GIS service companies, governments, utilities, and transportation authorities. A lot of people. Trimble is platinum sponsor of Intergeo. Great to have you here, Boris Kopiak. <laughs> I welcome Thomas Haring. Uh, Thomas Haring is a member of Hexagon's executive management team, president of Hexagon's geosystems division, and CEO of Leica Geosystems. Correct? Founded in Sweden in 1992, Hexagon has become a global leader in digital reality solutions, combining sensor, software, and autonomous technologies. Hexagon's products help to increase efficiency, productivity, quality, and safety across industrial manufacturing, infrastructure, public sector, and mobility applications. Hexagon, of course, is also platinum sponsor of Intergeo. So great to have you here, Thomas Haring. Thanks a lot. I'm pleased to welcome back uh, Olaf Freyer today. In August, he took the role as chief strategy officer at Hinter Expo and Conference, one of the leading private trade and conference organizers for live, hybrid, and digital events in the German-speaking region. Olaf oversees the organization of the Intergeo exhibition and the Intergeo conference on behalf of DBW. He brings nearly a decade of experience in key roles on a global scale from RX Global, formerly known as Reed Exhibitions, one of the world's top trade show organizers. As managing director at Hinter up until 2015, so that's why I'm talking about a comeback, uh, he played a vital part in the growth of Intergeo and successfully spearheaded projects in Switzerland, Turkey, and Eastern Europe. Welcome back, pleasure to have you here again, Olaf Freyer. So, at first, I'd like to collect some Intergeo feedback from our guests and give room for news uh, and innovative solutions uh, presented here in Stuttgart. So, um, let me start with the host of Intergeo, Professor Steiger. Um, what is your halftime statement? What are your impressions so far of this year's Intergeo? Thank you. Thank you, Christoph, for giving me the opportunity for this lift of question. Halftime statement. Well, first of all, if you are the host of such an event, after months of preparation, even though we do it over uh, decades of years, you're every time happy it's working. It's working, and we are happy that people are back. We are still in a phase of after COVID, phase of consolidation, we see. The exact figures will be given by Olaf later on. I don't want to, to give them now because I don't have them. 
but we are happy that we and that you are back. We see a lot of young people. We see the next generation. And we also see that the former surveying plus geo information, nowadays the geospatial community is much more than just surveying and geo information. That's my halftime statement. Okay. Um, so if you um, would describe the role of Intergeo for the communities, uh, how would be your definition and how did this change over the years? Uh, thank you for this question. D D we as DVW, we are a professional organization. We are neutral, we are independent, and therefore I think we are the ideal host offering a platform for all the different stakeholders, industry, science, professional associations, mapping authorities, authorities and, and government in general, but also private organizations, to interact and to connect and to come together. Because today we see really complex solutions. We do not see, or we see sensors, we see software, but nowadays we talk about bringing them together offering solution and therefore we have to talk, we have to interact. It's not just here is a prospectus I can order. It's, it's a, a bigger, a longer process. And therefore I think we are an ideal partner who can offer all of this. We have the conference here for, we have the stages and of course we have the exhibition. Um. So the organization of Intergeo is um, not the only task of uh, DVW, of course, within the year. So um, you have a lot of working groups, you have a lot going on. So um, what can you report from the, from the working groups? We have a lot of working groups. We have a difficult organization. I don't want to talk about the complex organization, but let me just give you three highlights of our working. We have in overall, we have eight commissions. And, and three uh, fora, and these commissions are working on different topics. The first one uh, is talking on, is working on how to create the next generation. We all know the next generation of engineers, of geospecialists, this is not easy. So we, we try to find ways, develop tools to find and to, to engage the next generation. On the technical level, our commissions are working on procedures, routines, how to check and prove complex measurement systems like these mobile mapping systems. Because at the end of the day, the customer wants to see what is the performance of it. And therefore, you need independent experts. That's where we do on this technical side. And last but not least, our valuation group, they do a lot of talking about transparency transparency of the market for properties, for market for housing, how to get transparency into this, also in order to engage all what's going on in the construction sector. That's what I can say very briefly about the activities we do apart. Of course, we also do uh, lifelong learning, etc., uh -huh. etc., et during the year. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Thomas Haring, in uh, 1995, uh, Leica like Geosystem had its first appearance at Intergeo. So, next year you will celebrate 30th anniversary. And um, uh, in your view, how did uh, Intergeo develop and how important is Intergeo for Hexagon nowadays? So, for us and for me, coming to Intergeo is like coming home. You meet family, you meet relatives, you meet friends, you meet the community. You meet a lot of people you have not met for some time. But you don't need to make appointments because you meet them anyhow, and that's great. You meet the community, you meet new people, and that's something how the Intergeo evolved over all these years. And for me, it's personally the 21st Intergeo. And what I really like the most is I still learn. I go around, I meet people, I learn, I find fascinating use cases, fascinating applications, and that's something which is always great. So Intergeo is very important for us, and it's fascinating. There's only one downside. I'm completely tired after three days. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, when I visit the Hexagon booth, so what awaits me there? What uh, innovations, uh, solutions did you bring to Stuttgart? 
I think I need to keep the answer short, right? So yeah, I keep it short. So um, exciting things, a lot of software developments, a lot of new releases on the software side on our platform, HXDR, interesting things which we have done. But one thing we are extremely proud of, we are bringing six degrees of freedom into construction, industrial precise industrial measurement for layout tasks. And that's something which is completely new, that's really a first, world first. That's something if you want to experience that, that's fascinating how imaging technology, AI can really provide benefits for layout, for construction. And it's great to see a lot of surveyors being highly interested in such solutions as well. And besides that, I think what you see is engage people. Our colleagues there, it's fantastic meeting all of them, seeing the engagement, seeing the passion they have, and hopefully you experience that as well at our booth, the passion of our people. That's, I think, the most exciting on our booth in terms of expectation. Okay. Uh, you put up a motto for Intergeo 24, uh, which occurred to me, and it's, it is, the future is now, utilize the transformative power of geodata. So what makes geodata so powerful in terms of transformation? For us, it's so powerful that geodata is a base for so many applications. And we have heard and through all these kind of um, presentations at the conference, a lot of use cases. We are seeing so many things. But what would be the world without geodata? And that's something we are seeing so many things coming up. And then if you combine geodata, precise geodata, with all the different technologies, you can transform industry. You can help industries to come better, make decisions more informative. You can do simulations. You can validate your assumptions. You could do things in the digital reality and can do the mistakes in digital reality. You don't need to make the mistakes in the real world. And then you can change what we call shaping um, the reality with that. And that's something which makes it so powerful, um, really getting data. And for us, it's always exciting to really learn more. We have a sustainability corner where we got uh, yesterday, I'm not sure how, 30, 40 great ideas what we could do with our technology in terms of making the world a better place. That's something we're trying to learn as well, and we're always surprised what kind of great ideas the community has. Thank you. Do you understand everything? Can you hear everything? OK. So uh, Boris Kopiak, um, Trimble has also been a loyal partner uh, to Intergeo for many years. And um, how important is this event in your annual planning? Yeah, I, I think uh, Thomas put it beautifully. So every year we have our, our Trimble uh, user conference, which we call Trimble Dimensions. And uh, every time we asked, when are you going to do one in Europe? I was like, why? We have Intergeo. So, so it's really, uh, we, we feel like home here. We, this is a fantastic opportunity, not just to interact with the Trimble user, but all of the users and all of the participants from other industry, like, like uh, Rudolf mentioned. So we, we feel like home here. So uh, Germany is, is, the, is our European hub. So our main office is in Frankfurt. Our, our core GNSS technology comes from Munich. Our mobile mapping systems come from Biberach. Uh, uh, our optical systems come from Vienna. So we, we are very, very reliant on, on German, German in general and, and European. So I come from Croatia. So the moment I board the plane in Colorado, I'm already feeling like I'm home. <laughs> so I'm, I'm super thrilled to be here. So. Okay. And uh, so what are your highlight topics this year in Stuttgart? What yeah, so, so the, the topics uh, the, this year, it's, it's all about how do we, how do we connect uh, more, more industries and more participants across various styles of, of uh, industry disciplines, project lifestyles together. And, and we are doing that uh, in a cloud. I know we have a lot of things in our mind when we say cloud, right? And, good and bad feelings, but that is one way, think of it as a Google Translate, think of it however you wish. It is a really f phenomenal way to connect people that are generally speaking different languages in their individual software or hardware packages. So for us, that's uh, Trimble Connect, so we are uh, super uh, happy to extend the capabilities of Trimble Connect. Uh, we, we just crossed uh, 37 million customers on Trimble Connect managing 22 million projects across the world, and we've added uh, reality capture data to the, to the Trimble Connect platform. So that, uh, that's one of the highlights this, this year. The, the, what excites us now is, is uh, all the power of, of uh, enabling some of the AI and some of the capabilities to automate some of that decision making and make it even easier for our customers. Of course, you will see that the upgraded uh, the R12i, which is now we call R980, right? You will see a lot of uh, fantastic uh, tools and uh, all, all, of, all of the solutions we, we are bringing together. But uh, I love Thomas's point, right? It's, it's the people we are here for. It's, it's you. 
it's our own teams are super passionate. A lot of us grew up in this industry and, and we, we owe a lot to, to give it back to. So it makes us happy to see Intergeo even bigger this year than it was the last okay. year. Great, thanks. Um, Thomas uh, Keifenbelt, I'd also last, like to ask you, what are your impressions so far at Intergeo? Yeah, I think uh, a lot has been said already. So I think what is really cool is the community. It's, it's the networking, it's meeting people. It's meeting a lot of people in three days, which is um, it's only one and a half day past. But I had already so many meetings here, spoke to so many different people, customers, partners, also competitors, just to have a discussion what is going on in the, in the field. So I think that is, that's one element. What I liked uh, a lot is at the conference, we saw the whole topic digital twin, um, it's become a reality now. So we are not talking about what you could do and what is potentially possible, but it is customers talking about what they are, are they really doing in real life. And that's, I think, one of the greatest uh, things there. And I think the third thing, and that's a bit the development from my perspective on Intergeo, it's moving away from this pure GIS-focused community to a much broader community. And it's not only talking GIS people, talking about GIS subjects, but it's, and that's a challenge for all of us, we need to be able to speak another language to actually address the people who are here now because they are not all experts. And those are the three real yeah. th important things for me. Yes, uh, I've read in your press release that one of your focus topics here is the digital twin and the solutions behind it. So. Um, Maybe you can tell us how far are we in Germany in terms of readiness um, of the digital twin? Where do we stand on a scale from 1 to 10? I think it's very difficult to answer that question because it, it depends. Um, I think we are everywhere between 1 and 10. There are probably 9 is, is the <laughs> ultimate level, but I would say there are customers who are really, really far ahead, and there are the ones who are still dis discussing the concept and, and waiting to see um, that it's being proven by other ones. And I think th that's one of the key aspects. In order to move forward with it, it's not really a technology issue. It's the technology can do everything already. It's a much, much more about leadership, about vision, about guiding yeah, where do we want to go to. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ralf Musler, um, so of course I'd like to ask you also about your impressions of Intergeo, but maybe everything has been said, so uh, what awaits us at your booth, at the uh, Autodesk booth this year? What innovations did you bring? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I heard great things on, 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 Inter, on Intergeo and the impressions, but I think I can add one uh, piece more to the discussion because, I mean, we also joined very early. I mean. Intergeo, we, we joined it very early. And I think what we loved is the mindset of the people. So, and what we also saw at Intergeo already at the early beginnings, we have a crowd of people who understand data and the value of data. And that's not common for the rest of the construction industry. That's a big, that's a big difference. So, and, and therefore for us, I mean, it, uh, let's say that that perspective and the change of Intergeo to become more open um, uh, was an enabler for us really to understand this event as a kind of digital transformation hub, becoming a kind of what we call digital transformation or digital transformation hub because Intergeo has gone beyond GIS and integrated a lot of other tech topics uh, which are very important for that process. So, and then uh, what brings you or what can we share on our booth? I mean, it's a set of exciting things. I mean, maybe let's start with uh, Autodesk AI, what we launched last year at AU. I mean, we had very early a lot of AI features integrated in all of our technologies, but I think we are more intentional now really addressing and helping or enabling our technology to deliver to, deliver to the problems of the industry. I mean, support better decision on sustainability uh, challenges, context, then uh, enabling organization 
solving workflow issues. I mean, just to be more efficient by changing processes. So AI is a big topic then um, uh, I think related to what I said earlier, connecting the world, BIM and GRS, it's a big topic. So we are very happy that we are close to our friends from S3. So, and that's a big topic for us, breaking silos, integrating technologies and integrating teams, people. And, and then also Autodesk Water, because what we saw, I mean, we are talking about a lot of scarcities and challenges we are facing coming from the environmental um, uh, side. And I think just what we saw recently in Germany with the bridge, with, let's say, uh, with, the, with uh, the weather situation or water situation, I think technology has a strong place to help the people to better manage all the challenges we are facing on that. Therefore, we are very happy to, to be here with this great ecosystem and going beyond borders because all of us, we are working on the same mission changing and developing this ecosystem, making people ready for that digital transformation. <clears throat> Great. Um, Olaf Freyer, um, this is your first interview in official function since 2015. So um, how do you see Intergeo today? How has it developed in the, within the last 10 years? Yeah, what, what should I say? I would like to say, wow, what's going on here, you know? So it's, uh, we, we were in a very good and strong position almost in 2015. And uh, when, you, when you look at the Intergeo, it's, it's like, um, I would like to say a, a comparison. You know, when I start doing Intergeo first time, it was in 1998. And, and when you look back, what kind of topics were there on Vogue? You know, we talk about GPS, you know, this was marks a milestone. Then, when it comes to the early new century, we talked about integrating geo-information. It was another milestone. It just accelerated the, the entire industry and, 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 was, and, and paved the way where we are now, from my point of view. And, and Intergeo almost was able to, to cover these trends and, and bridge the gap between the needs and, and the demands on explaining the rest of the world why they need the geospatial information. And uh, now with, with all the opportunities and development and the technology and, and also dealing with data and are able to, to collect data, you know, it's exactly what you hear here. It's, it's fantastic to see that, that this contributes a lot to uh, things which is needed at the moment to, to design a better future and, and a safe future for not only for us. You know, I have only 10 years uh, until I get retired, but mm -hmm. as you mentioned already, there are so many young people, which is fantastic. We have to think about them, you know, and, and this is why this industry and, and this platform can do a lot for this. And I'm so happy to see this here, how it well developed over the, the last years, you know, and, and uh, I feel the vibe, I feel the dynamic, and, and this is what, what it's really great to see. And, and also that, that it's, also we heard about breaking silos. I guess this is really needed when we talk about having a future, you know, it, it, no one of us will find a solution on, on their own. We have to collaborate. We have to deal with this, what we have are the current challenges. And yeah. there's a variety on, on challenges we have to tackle. But it's needed to collaborate to save time because we have no time. You know, we have to find solution the next week, the next day when something has happened. And, and I'm very happy to see th this kind of, of discussion here also in, in, in different levels, you know, you mentioned the conference, but ho also we have here the stages, we have the, the, the exhibition itself with a different kind of, of networking as, uh, opportunities. I guess all this is needed to, to come to the stage to find solution for, for a better and greener and sustainable future. And, and I'm so happy to see this here. And I hope mm. also that, that Intergeo will be uh, always ahead of this curve to offer this platform for all the experts and, and to, to op open and be open for innovation and, and, and push and accelerate different kind of development which is needed. Yeah. Um, as media representatives always are interested in facts and figures, uh, can, you, can you provide us with some numbers uh, of this year's Intergeo? Yes, I can. <laughs> Would you please? 
But it's, I'm, I'm also, only a short comment, it's, I'm happy that this is not the main information which I ask, you know, would be asked. You know, it was also different thing. when I look on the back, when it was in the early 20s, so everyone was listening to me about the figures, you know. Yeah, it's important, but it's, it's not the most important thing. So, nevertheless, we, we are very happy to welcome around 600 exhibitors here in, in, the, in the halls, and uh, we are also very happy to increase the, the, the share of, of our, our international exhibitors, which is now by at, at uh, 57%, which is 4% more than what we had in, in last year, so we are nearly 60%. This is amazing, you know? And, and when I look at the, the, the audience here in, in the halls, you know, it's, I'm, it's also too fantastic to see that we're on about 5% plus against uh, 23 and what it's also very good to see, and this is something which underpinned everything what you heard earlier, that we have to collaborate, that we have a solution here. So also the, the, we increase the number on international visitors. So we are nearly 50%. You know, this is amazing from my point of view. Uh, when I left in 2015, it was not like this. So we were 35%, something like this. But now we are nearly 50%. And this underpins also the role and the, the position of, of this intergeo and, and all the experts which are here. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. It reflects the impressions, everything we've heard now. So let's take a deeper dive into our topic. Um, just tonight, the district, the uh, Landkreis um, Oder Spree, declared the highest food warning level. So, and a study recently published by the uh, Umweltbundesamt reveals that nearly most of all German community districts, this is 80%, have faced extreme weather events over the past 10 years. So the study also reveals that only a few municipalities, 12%, have a strategy to adjust and strengthen their resilience against impacts of climate change. So, Professor Steiger, um, how can an association like the DVW directly contribute to help those municipalities in Germany um, to prepare better for those impacts? Thank, thank you for this question. Directly, we can do nothing. But indirectly, we can do a lot. I like this statement, we are on the same mission. And we as society, not only as surveyors or geospatial community, we are on, on the same mission. If we talk about climate change, if we talk about these heavy rainfalls, for example, what was the reason for the heavy rainfalls? The Mediterranean Sea's temperature is in average five to nine degrees higher than it was 10 years ago. And this affected that there was more humidity in the atmosphere and this effect, etc. Et this makes very clear and easy to understand where these masses of water are coming from. So what can we do? We as an association, again, we can offer a platform for all the stakeholders to show our solution, to show, to show best cases, examples, to use geodata. 30 years ago, the surveyor was in the shadow. He was working for administration, he did cadastral work, and that was it. Nowadays, each political and social decision is based on geodata. One of our missions is to convince people outside of our bubble to use this data and to see the value of this data. So one, one of our possibilities as DVW organizing a conference, having a scientific journal, making workshops and seminars, inviting people to panel talks, etc., to show what we can offer, what we can provide. Okay, um, thank you. So let's talk about sustainable urban development. Um, Aspen Seestadt um, is a district under construction in Vienna's 22nd district. It is currently one of the largest urban development projects in Europe and by the 2030s more than 25,000 people will live and more than 20,000 people will work in the urban lakeside. 
Aspen Seestadt was developed with a goal to meet a greenhouse gas neutral economy by 2040 with high efficiency buildings, maximum use of renewable energy sources, e-mobility and mitigating extreme heat in the summer. So Thomas Keifenbelt, as Esri is involved in this project, um, please tell us about it. It's, it sounds fantastic. And how do your solutions contribute to a successful realization of this project? Yeah, I think the key, the key issue is actually to establish, to use a digital, so the basis was a digital twin. And the, the idea is you use a digital twin to actually model what you are going to going to do, and and that was actually what was was done there. So a lot of the energy consumption, or actually the the carbon emissions, are part, are coming from buildings, and from building and construction. If you can model things in advance, and you can show people this is how it will look like, these are possible scenarios. You can actually reduce reduce these emissions. So that was one of the key elements. So it's actually use a digital twin to model what it's going to be and to evaluate possible scenarios. And then you can do actually run through several scenarios to determine what happens if, and based on various parameters, and, and of course emission is, no, on, is only one parameter, you can then determine what fits best. So that's the, that's the key element there. Um, so and what's the status of this project? Um, there, it's in implementation. Okay, and what role does AI play with, in your solutions? Yeah, I think AI is is really, it's one of the the really new things we we are experiencing, and I think we are still at the beginning. So at the moment, we use, from my point of view, there are two kinds of AI. The one is geo AI, where we use artificial intelligence to opt detect objects, for example, from imagery or recognize patterns um, from unstructured data. However, those are only the, and we use it to do things like predict wildfires or model traffic streams, um, model extreme weather situations. However, the, we can use, the, AI can do a lot more. So especially when we come to more complex topics like impact on climate, these are things people cannot do themselves anymore. So currently we use AI a lot to increase productivity. However, the next step is actually to do things that we cannot do ourselves anymore. And I think that's the second element. Um, it's not so much geo AI, it's more AI assistance. We currently use our integrating, Ralph mentioned it as well, Autodesk is doing something similar, is using AI assistance to actually make access to data more simple. So you don't need to be the expert to ask a smart question to a system and the system will provide you with the answer. And that's probably the next step that also these AI assistants will help us to ask more complicated questions than we are currently able to uh, develop ourselves. So that's, those are the two aspects on AI. Okay. Um, actually, we don't always have the chance to start a project like this on an open field. So um, our cities are built. Um, and um, I want to talk about solutions uh, wh which can help now in, in, in the cities we live in. So we all know the figures that residents of cities, especially in Europe, suffer from extreme heat in the summer period. Um, so. What can architects do nowadays, um, Ralf Mosler, uh, do against the so-called urban heat effect in our cities, and how do Autodesk solutions contribute to this solution? Yeah, I mean, there are uh, different, let's say, tactics to, to approach that challenge. I mean, basically, it's a kind of what, what Thomas said. Um, I mean, first of all, you really need to to capture the existing environment and understand the situation. And based on, I would, would say, based on that process, you can use processes like scan to BIM to, to build up digital twins, put it into context. You have tools to, um, to, 
to analyze the situation, what we call automatic analytics, really under different criteria. One criteria in, this, uh, in that context would be to, let's say, also integrate um, natural elements, trees, plants, and all these things, what you need to have, a, let's say, a microclimate to support, a, let's say, a, also in a city, uh, a comfortable uh, climate. And that is, if you do not have digital tools, who, let's say, uh, which enable you to simulate it, it is, very, it is very challenging or nearly impossible to really provide solution proposals, because typically it's not one solution that fits, typically it's a combination of measures you, you have to take. And, um, and especially in the climate or sustainability context, we are discussing materials, better understanding of materials and the impact of materials also, let's say when you do a renovation, it's, it makes a big difference if you, for example, if you take wood or concrete. I mean, that has a, has a lot of impact in that the microclimate. Heat, yeah. The absorption uh, Exactly, so it, it has impact on the uh, uh, carbon balance sheet, it has impact on energy efficiency, and it has impact on, let's say, how, uh, how that microclima can, can develop in, in these, let's say, islands of the cities. So every measure probably will have an effect, but um, how many measures or have to be taken that, that the city um, doesn't have those heat islands? Can you say it again? Sorry. Um, if you have one measure, if you take one measure to cool cities down in a certain quarter, um, how many measures do we need? Is it, is, do we need a revolution or is it like every measure counts when we... I mean, probably you get from different plan planners different answers, but I mean, I, I can share a trend with you what we see. I mean, if you look a little bit around, uh, you, 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 green facading is a big trend. So not, uh, let's say, typically really to have natural elements also in facade systems. I mean, go to Singapore, for example, and look how they design the architecture. Uh, that helps a lot. And I mean, right now, that, that kind of, let's say, working differently, organizing differently parks and facades, that's a big topic in, in that context. Yeah. That's one what I would favorite. Okay, um, another societal issue um, is accessibility. So, um, historical quarters and cities um, often build the heart of the city, but in many cases they are full of obstacles with cobblestones or tram rails, um, whatever. Um, and how these places can be made uh, accessible by using geospatial technology shows a project from Switzerland, um, which is the redesign of Barfüßer Platz, Barfüßer Square, in the heart of Basel, and your hexagon is involved, and um, tell us about it. Who of you has been in Basel, in Basel before? It's very close to Stuttgart, if the train is on time. So, so, and it's a lively city, it's fantastic, such a nice old town, you can walk around, you can have some drinks, enjoy the sun, but what about if you have some limited mobility? Yeah, so what happens then? Or if construction work happens, what happens then? Yeah, so that's exactly the outcome of a discussion we had with the University of Applied Science and the brainstorming we had is that what can we do? What kind of purposeful, what kind of meaningful application can we develop based on reality capture data? That's why I was really excited seeing all our hexagon technologies in use, flying sensors, mobile mapping systems, so we really blocked the whole city for scanning. And out of that we captured really the whole the Barfüßer Platz, which was great. And out of that, we really then created a kind of, not really a map, a 3D environment. But that's only the first step that you have that. And then what we call in Hexagon, we immerse it, of course, we share it, and we activate it. So the city of Basel was involved then, the canton of Baselstadt was involved, and now um, they take it as a pilot project to really see what they can do out of that. And for us, it's a great use of our technology. It's not a use case which you can monetize immediately, but it's something where we can do good. And that's something, I think, for the whole industry, we would like to encourage all of us um, what is that saying? Do good, let others do good, talk about that, let others talk about that. And that's something which I find fascinating because, as you said, Rudolf, in the past surveyors, when I came into surveying 20 plus years ago, somebody told me, nobody knows what a surveyor does until he does not do it anymore. 
Yeah, and that's something which has changed. Now we know what the spatial industry is doing for us and what kind of benefits we can bring to society. And that's something which is a great example for that. Um, I imagine like the, the scanning of cobblestone and tram rails is, uh, needs a very precise measurement. So how important is it, uh, the quality of data that, that, uh, that you have to take? Extremely important, especially if you want to take these kind of decisions based on millimeters, centimeters. But um, the advantage is if you like a technology, you don't have that issue. Um, but you know, it's really about it's really about doing it precisely, doing it in a combination between experts and then others. And that was great with the university, which has a lot of experience in reality capture as well, with hexagon technology and other technologies. And that's something which we have seen. It's really about the accuracy of the data, having fresh data as well. It's not only capturing once and then you can live with this data forever. So it's really these flash cycles which we are doing now as well, which is fantastic. So, um, thank you. Uh, Boris, one challenge administrations uh, face are outdated infrastructure often built in the 20th century. Um, and another challenge is the impact of climate change, for example, with heat waves leading to water shortage and with heavy rainfalls causing severe flooding. So I'm talking about the main task of municipalities to maintain this infrastructure. So how can we harness geodata um, to make infrastructure um, gas, water, um, electricity more resilient and maybe smarter? I think you said it really well at the opening, right? We, we face many challenges these days. I, I think we can all agree we, our infrastructure is aging, right? And, and then we have the unfortunate events like in Dresden. Right? So I, I think there's the, the geospatial industry is, is positioned extremely well to help address some of those challenges, right? Like Rudolf said, maybe not directly, but indirectly. It, it does require a, a good alliance also with the government agencies, the, the vision, change in leadership, right? It is a massive investment, right? So, so how to optimize and, and approach it in a sustainable way? Because you cannot change every bridge in Germany on, in one year, right? Yeah. So, so, so how, how to prioritize and, and how to be smarter about it, right? That's where we come to the, the AI. That's how we, we come to the insights, the quality of data Thomas was talking about, right? So I think IoT is going to play a vital role there, right? So, so the, 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 when we talk about the digital twins, right, we, we, we don't talk about just digital to physical. We also talk about physical to digital and, and back and forth continuously, right? The, to, to the level of the simulation uh, like you talked uh, there. So I, I think we, we can play a phenomenal role by both providing that trust in the, in the geospatial context that's provided, right, but connecting it back to the office, to the various shareholders, right, because the, 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 the understanding of a bridge relies not on just one person, right, there's, there's probably 10 different disciplines, a paving expert, a structural designer, uh, an architect, an urban planner, like all of them might have a role in, in saying what needs to happen, right. Uh, then we, with our sensors today, the massive amount of data that we are collecting today with the AI, the opportunity is, is again to be smarter, right? With our mobile mapping, you can drive hundreds of kilometers of road in a day, but then using that data, in because the data is only as smart as you make it smart, right? So running the payment analysis, so you don't do the scheduled maintenance, you do more predictive maintenance, right? So you can prioritize and optimize deployment of your valuable resources in the areas that need the help the most. Yeah. Right? So I, I think we have the right tools. I, I, I think it requires alignment on many levels, right? From government to the private industry, right? To the uh, private public partnerships, us as, as the manufacturers of, of the solutions, we, we all play a role, right? I, I love the, uh, Thomas said, the, we have the, the common mission, right? I, I think yeah. we need to be aligned. Thank you. Um, as this example was mentioned uh, before the Carola Brücke in Dresden, which, which crashed, um, given uh, the right mindset of all the participants, could like geospatial technology, could, could, could geospatial technology have avoided like the breakdown of a bridge? The bridge should have been, I think, renovated in 2025 and uh, this plan didn't work out. So, uh, uh, open question. No, uh, absolutely. I, I think that the, 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 that's uh, 
the, somebody said earlier, geospatial is in everything, right? So it starts with understanding the where, right? Understanding what, right? Getting that data. You cannot make a decision if you don't have the data, right? So it starts with the where, goes to the what you're going to do about that data now before you can make that actionable insight. So I, I would say who's better positioned than, than the people in this room, in this conference, to help provide that, that science of where, right, like the Esri calls it, right, to, to help understand then the, what's the behavior of the asset. I, I think we, we have all the tools at our disposal, right, so we, we just need to be smarter about using them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah m maybe one thought uh, to, add, to add in that context. I mean, it's, I mean, what happened in, in Dresden, I mean, it's always difficult to say we could have avoided uh, or whatsoever. But I think we, we, we could think differently on it. I mean, we, we, talk, we are talking about IoT. And for example, simple things like putting some sensors on bridges. I mean, we have so many bridges. I mean, a big program, 30,000 bridges are getting renovated. And we, we know they are all sick in a way. And then to think about what are the five or six key information I need. I mean, is it the traffic I measure? Is it, are these other criteria? I mean, that would be very simple to build up that kind of uh, early warning system, you know, to, to really have that in place. And that's yeah. not, first of all, that would not be very expensive. The technology is available. And right now, I think it's just the mindset who does not allow that we are, let's say, using very simple predictive technologies to, to at least support us to better understand risks or to better become aware of risks. Yes. Did you, did you agree, find a solution? <laughs> yes, I agree. But I mean, at the end of the day, this is a non-technical question. Among experts, among civil engineers, it is known since decades that more than 50% of German bridges are in danger. But politicians do not want to listen. And they give you money to, to measure the defamation, but the day the engineer comes to the politician and says, we have to stop the circulation on this bridge, then heavy discussion starts, because you need money, there is now another route over the, over the river, how can we go over the river, etc., etc. They don't want to listen to this. It is a, a, a problem of society. It's not a technical... We know, our expert knows since decades that a lot of bridges need to be renovated, but really renovated, not just new color. Yeah. Hello. But I would say it makes a... It makes a difference if you have to look every day in the mirror. Today, you hear it once and then you put it aside. If you get it mirrored every day, and if you get a dashboard with a priority of your pains, that is a different topic. And then I think, I'm, I mean, agree too, it's, it's about people and their mindset. But I think we can make it more visible more urgent, more clear, I think. That is what we, what we can do um, as a... Yeah, that reminds me of a heated discussion I had two years ago with a civil engineer from the University of Stuttgart on IoT sensors on bridges. And for us, in terms of geospatial industry, geospatial technology is about inspection. With inspection technology, we can really see the remaining, or understand the remaining life cycle of an asset and talk about asset health. That's something we can do with our technologies. And then, of course, we can monitor. We can monitor bridges with all different kinds of technologies, GNSS, whatever, reflectors, total stations, radar technology. So a lot of technologies are around. It is not expensive. It's quite affordable. And you really ch ask yourself, why is it not more in use? So that's something we can do. But then it really comes back, what are we doing with effects, if the effects are there? And that's something which is out of our control, unfortunately. OK, uh, with uh, time on my mind, I'd like to draw attention back to Intergeo. So um, I know Intergeo 24 is, uh, there's another half. It's running, and it's running brilliantly. So what can you say about Intergeo 25? Me? Yeah, please. Well, we, we, we started new topics like Earth observation, maritime solutions. And we will continue doing so. The format we see here, we learn and we know it is more than just having an exhibition, just having a stand. It's the platform, it's the exchange. 
with, with our partners, with authorities, with standard bureaus, offices, with research. And we will continue this track. Having a mix of information, I would not say entertainment, but of course networking, meeting people, meeting friends, meeting colleagues, and we will continue this track for 25 in Frankfurt. Okay, Olaf, um, maybe from uh, the expo point of view, what um, give us some insights, your vision? Um, 2025, with We'll no doubt about continue this this the journey of of this show, and uh, you can see here and you heard about what are the trends of tomorrow, and from my point of view and excuse me when I'm not having the full overview, but I think we are in the first stage of leveraging the potential of of AI of of digital twins or BIM, so I expect this will growing until 2025 when we are in Frankfurt and uh, from the point of view of the of Intergeo I would like to so we heard a lot about challenges from from the point of view of the, the Intergeo itself I would like to say it's a privilege to be at this position playing this show as a champion league show because here is the who is who of the industry we have everyone here sort leaders experts who really can contribute to, to the further development of what is needed, you know. And I guess a good mission is also here hearing it's clear we have to collaborate and, and not to separate. And especially what, we ha what I see, what we can do and what we have to do a bit better is to invite the, the politician in a different way. And this is also what Intergeo not only can do on their own, I guess here it, it's needed to be together with the, with the big key players of the industry sending a common message to the government saying, look, we can help you, don't be afraid, you know, we are friends and, and let's design our future in a different way so that we all feel more comfortable in that what we are doing. And, and this is one pers per perspective from my, of mine, how I look at Frankfurt. Looking at a global perspective, I would like to say a lot of people around the globe can learn from that what we showcase here. So it's a it's a melting pot, you know. It's 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 what like I said. It's that meeting international meeting point, the geospatial industry needs to bring things forward. It's fine that we have also at other places bigger shows or events like like user conferences. It's just needed, you know. Mm -hmm. But here with a with a diverse profile what we what we cover here we bring together different industries different players to collaborate you know and and this is what i how i look at to frankfurt inviting the the politician in a different way finding more collaborative way to to go and to join forces with our key players we, we only be stronger when we are together, you know, and, and then I have no doubt about that we can do a next big step on our journey to help the, the future that also younger people are really love to come here, that we not have this, I don't know what, how to call it, but the, the traditional view on we are surveyors or this is not the case, you know, so we are, we are in front of anything, we are ahead of the curve and everyone is invited to be part of it and design the future. So I'm looking very, very positive to Frankfurt and the opportunities we have with this kind of location there with the international airport. So I guess it's, it's okay to say we invite the world to, to collaborate for a new future. Perfect. That was a fantastic closing. Thank you, Olaf. Um, so are there any questions from the auditorium from uh, media representatives? We will provide microphones for this purpose. No? So I thank you all for your contribution and the fantastic input. I thank you for your presence here today. And um, well, thank you very much. Enjoy Intergeo. Maybe we have a date for Intergeo 25 already? Uh, 7th to 10th or 9th of October. Yeah. Perfect. And as always, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, never change a winning team. So Excellent. thank you very much, everybody.
and uh, another good half of uh, Intergeo 24. Get inspired. Thank you. Thanks a lot.